Hello and welcome to this episode of Blue Ice Talks. Today I'm going to be focusing only on one event from this week, Skate America. There have been other events this past week, but I'd like to just focus on this one for this episode. There will also be a summary of changes to the Grand Prix series assignments at the end. The video will be divided into sections, so it's up to you which you'd like to watch and which ones you want to skip. Skate America started off the 2022 to 2023 Grand Prix series, where skaters compete in up to two events out of six and earn points depending on their placements. The top six in each discipline at the end of the series qualifies for the Grand Prix final, which is held at the same time as the Junior Grand Prix final this season in Torino. Going into the ice dance event, the favourites to win were the American team of Madison Chock and Evan Bates. The pair finished fourth at the Winter Olympics in Beijing and have the most experience of the pairs competing this season. They had a clear lead up to the rhythm dance, but after a few mistakes in the free dance, only just managed to hold on to their lead and stay in first place. Their compatriots, Caitlin Hoyek and John Luke Baker, had a phenomenal free dance where every element was exquisite, and so being less than a point out of the gold medal is highly impressive. In an event of changes, the Canadians Marie Jade Lauriot and Romain Legac managed to hold on to third comfortably and secure their medal too. In the pairs event, the favourites to win were again an American team. World champions Alexa Canerium and Brandon Frasier went in as the top team, and with two strong skates, they reached the expectations and took the gold. Diana Stellato Dudek and Maxime Deschamps from Canada fought incredibly hard and took the silver, although there was some confusion expressed by the crowd when this pair didn't win in the free skate. Kelly Ann Lauren and Lucas Ethier from Canada took the bronze, finishing comfortably above fourth place with good skates again and significant mistakes in the free skate from the German pair. In the women's event, contrary to what the ISU commentator said, the favourite coming in was the reigning Olympic bronze medalist and world champion Kari Sakamoto. A home favourite for the event was the junior world champion Isabella Vito. However, as this was her senior debut, putting her on the same level as Kari is dishonest. That being said, Kari had an absolutely incredible free skate and only had minor mistakes, which extended her lead and solidified the gold medal. Isabeau had a few small mistakes in her skate, but as it was her senior debut, earning the silver medal is a wonderful achievement and she should be very proud of herself. Amber Glenn, Levito's compatriot, attempted the triple axel and then performed her heart out to secure the bronze. Some personal honourable mentions were Hay and Lee who finished in fourth, Ekaterina Kurakova who finished fifth, and Gracie Gold who finished sixth. I'm now going to contradict myself here. In the men's event, contrary to the women's event, the favourite going in was the junior world champion Ilya Malinin. Although he didn't have the same wealth of experience as skaters like Roman Sadovsky or the reigning four continents champion Junwan Cha, he did become the first man to land the quadruple axle in competition and has shown very high technical ability. Although he fell in the free skate, he landed the quadruple axle along with three other quads cleanly to take over the top spot and land on the podium. The winner of the short programme, Kao Miura from Japan, took the silver medal after fighting hard for both programmes and landing some beautiful quadruple jumps of his own. His short programme was a delight to watch. Rounding off the podium, Junwon Cha from the Republic of Korea took the bronze after a small mistake in the short programme kept him out of first there and a few errors crept into his free skate. However, as the short programme was the same day as his 21st birthday, he could be forgiven for celebrating a little. As before, there have been some changes to the Grand Prix assignments since last week. There were some updates to the Skate America lineup, but I won't go over them since the event has already passed. At Skate Canada, McBeath and Bartholomé withdrew from the pairs event and have been replaced by Plazas and Fernandez. At the Grand Prix de France, Fala and Bell have withdrawn and have been replaced with Mokova and Moko. Next week, there is the second Grand Prix event. Skate Canada will be held from the 28th to the 30th of October. 
The Dennis Ten Memorial Challenge as part of the Challenger Series will be held from the 26th to the 29th with events for men, women and ice dance. There are some other smaller competitions but these are the main ones. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for making it to 10 episodes with me. I'm really sorry, it's raining quite heavily while recording this, so if you can hear some ambient rain sounds in the background, I'm sorry. Thank you to everyone who sent me feedback on the videos via social media. I really appreciate the comments and will keep trying to improve these. As I said before, studying is getting more intense for me, but I will do my best to keep this going. If there's anything you'd like to add to my summary or that you'd like me to change, please let me know in the comments. My card with my links is in the description, along with the links to the results I displayed. See you in the next one!